Hey everybody, it's Ross and uh, I'm at Coffee Time with Ross. We know the deal, the coffee's being percolated. And so while I'm waiting, I'm just like to hang out at the corner here and just uh, look at scripture. A lot of times it's just what I call flipping around. Uh, you have verse by verse teaching. I, I preach verse by verse. I do topical studies. Uh, it seems like th this season of my life, I'm going to uh, encouragement on trials and, and uh, tribulations of Christians. And the Bible speaks lots of that because we need encouragement, don't we? And I got to uh, James. Love the book of James. When, when I preach, I go, turn to your table of contents. And people do that. And I say, look under James. And then they look under where they're, you know, uh, turn to 1,887 page. And they laugh. But why I do that? Because you may be a new Christian and not know where James is. And it's easier to find James because it's a small book compared to a lot of the books in the New Testament. So you can get right to it without having to go back and forth. And uh, some new Christian may get embarrassed about not knowing where James is and they shouldn't. And that's why I say go to the table of contents, look up the book of James. So that's what I do. It's a good tip for you preachers that, that, that do that. It's just a thing I've learned over the years. And I was looking at uh, James 1, uh, 2, and 4. What, what a powerful book. James did not necessarily get along with Martin Luther. I wonder why. It's a good debate for my theological friends. I wonder why James and Martin Luther didn't see eye to eye on theology. We'll go over that one day. Does anybody know that? Uh, a two to four. He says, James does, the Apostle James, consider it all joy, my brethren and sister. And it's, I'm reading from the King James, but brothers and sisters, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Wow, that's just, that's just a mouthful, a brain full. And he was writing this time when they, at this time, Jews were being converted to Christianity and then they were experiencing trials because of their conversions. They were losing their jobs. They were being, pre uh, you know, prejudice was going against them. Hey, you're, you're a Jew, why are you converting to Christianity? Well, get out of here. They were losing their jobs, losing their status, losing their, their reputation. It was tough back then. And still people are being persecuted for their faith now, but not like it was then. But this is the context of the, of the verse. But he, he wants to give them encouragement. Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. Trials. What, joy? Consider it joy when I'm suffering, when I'm getting laid off of work, or my family is having difficulty, I'm having t trouble feeding them. I have some health problems, my family does too. I'm not sure where, where today is going to be like or tomorrow. What do you mean consider it all joy? That's, that's fascinating that he would say, consider it joy when you encounter various trials. When you as a Christian encounter trials of any kind, remember as a Christian, God is with you and understands those trials, whatever they may be. We all have a long list of them. But you're not going to live in that long list of trials. You want to keep a short account of your trials you want God to help you every day of your life. Raise your hands to God. Pray to God well, however you have your, your interaction to worship and praise and prayer to God. But ask him every day to say, Lord, this is, this is uh, advice. Surrender. Say, I surrender this day to you, God. Holy Spirit, indwell me. Empower me. Direct my footsteps while I run this race today. How about that? It's a good prayer. But he says, consider joy when you're encountered with various trials. That would be like, what? Some people say, joy? What's, what's, what's in the, the, the trials? I'm, I'm going through trials, and you're saying, consider it all joy? Consider it all joy. Well, we're not finished with the passage. And this, this was a, uh, this letter, James, uh, 
was dispersed to all the churches. Like I said, most letters of the epistles, um, the, the, these letters from James, Apostle Paul, and Timothy were, were dispersed in the, in the area of Judea many, many times to many churches. Um, so consider that. Lots of people reading letters. You read letters all the time, and these are considered letters. It's like if you opened up a letter in, in, in your mailbox. And then he goes, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. That's, that, that'll preach that one verse. Knowing that the testing, he's saying, okay, you're going to be tested. You're going to go through trials. And what? Testing of your faith. Testing of your faith. The test. It tells me that some people have false faith. So if, if you're being tested, if your faith is being tested, it's not because God doesn't love you. It's not because he's mad at you. He wants to test your, your faith and my faith to see if it's real faith. There's people out there right now that believe their faith is real and it's not because they haven't done what God says to do in the Bible is repent and believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Turn from your sins, repent and believe that Christ died for your sins. He paid the ultimate penalty for your sins. He made the sin debt payment to God that you and I could not make. He fulfilled the law perfectly, what you and I can never do. That's it. You become a born-again Christian. Then, then go get baptized. ASAP, I'll call it. Always encourage someone that you know that comes to the Lord. Go get baptized. When? Now. I can't do it now. Tomorrow. When? Always remember that so they can identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Christ was baptized. So salvation, baptism, sanctification in this world will keep you separated from the world. Grow in the word and, and consider it joy. Find joy in your trials. That is the victory. Victory in trials is the victory. Do, do the trials in your life go away because you're a Christian? Absolutely not. I have more trials today as being a Christian for a third of my life or more than I've ever had as a non-Christian. As a non-Christian, hey man, I'm living the way I want to live when I want to live it. Don't have any problems because I have no accountability. No accountability. But he says, consider yourself joy when you encounter various trials. Various means there's lots of different trials. So he doesn't say a specific trial. But what you're going through a trial, more than likely, when you're hearing my voice, are, are you going through trials? Is there a trial in your life? Are you going to be, is your faith being tested? You know, we, there's a lot of tests being run today on medicine and other things to, to, to come up with something or, or test it to see if it's real. You know, a, a goldsmith will test the purity of the gold by fire. That's another good sermon. By fire. The slag drops to the bottom and the good stuff comes to the top and they scoop up the, the top because that's the real gold and then they make whatever they're making of gold. So you'll, your faith will be tested by fire, by trials. But have joy because you're a child of God and your eternal destiny is secure because of your faith in Christ. Sola fide. By grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, there's no good works that will even compare minutely to the perfection of Jesus the Christ, the Son of God. The son of man, son of David, son of God. You know, by the way, son of David, the son of man was used, Jesus used that term to describe himself more than any other term. Did you know that? From what I can find in the New Testament, son of man. He was certainly son of God. God come to earth as man. But he identified himself with man because he was 100% human, 100% God. He never Stop being God to become man. That's some false religion out there that you, he had to put on different hats at certain times. That's not true. Read Colossians. All things were made by Jesus, for Jesus, and through Jesus. Nothing would be made that was made unless Jesus made it. 
God spoke the world into existence through Christ. Colossians, I believe it's in Colossians 1. Read it. It's fascinating. You can read the whole Colossians in, in 30 minutes. And then the final verse. Yes, coffee time. And let endurance have its perfect result. Well, first of all, knowing that the testing of your faith, what it produces. What does it produce? It produces... It produces endurance. It's going to help you endure. Endurance is an important doctrine in our, our Christian experience. We want to finish the line. We may not finish first, but we want to finish. When things come to you and your trials come and you seem to can't bear it, ask God, God, I want to finish this race. Now, I may limp across the finish line, but I'm going to finish the race because I'm going to rely on your power, Holy Spirit, to get me, pick me up, to keep me back running again so I can finish the race and endure. Most people are good at a short burst of speed. I used to be a really good sprinter. I could really run fast, about 100 yards. Most people can run short distances fast. But when it comes to that mile or that 5K or that 10K, those Olympians are pretty much running the same speed I am running on the 100-yard dash. It's incredible how fast they run for a long period of time. I am not good at that. They endure because they want to be at the end to finish the race. They want to be there in a position to finish the race. Or you may win the race, but either case may be, you're going to please God if you endure. What a great analogy. What a great analogy. And let endurance have its perfect result. Endure. Let, let, let it have its way. Let endurance do what endurance is going to do. And always rely on God because you can't finish the race on your own. I can't finish the race on my own. So let endurance have its perfect result. What's 